how's it going YouTube? Tonight is the night before the balance manifesto, which is means it is the night before everything we know in PoE for the last couple months will change completely. Or maybe even longer than a couple of months, maybe like the last few years, because the flasks are going to get changed. Mana builds will probably get changed. I'm pretty sure that Archmage has been around since the Delirium League. And what else is going to get changed? Self-chill will probably get changed. But... For this video, I wanted to talk about how exactly do you scale your DPS into the hundreds of millions because a lot of people often ask, my skill only does 5 million, it only does 10 million damage. How do people have 400 million? How do people get up to 200 million or 300 million or 100 million? So I'm going to look at one person's POB and this is actually the highest damage POB I think I could find that was actually legitimate and it's actually an elemental hit player. And I'm going to go over why exactly does this person do so much damage and how you can, you yourself, one day get 400 million DPS on a skill. So I'm going to go over quickly what I think will be nerfed in 3.15. It'll just be a very quick summary because it's probably not too important because we'll find out everything tomorrow. And then I'm going to go over this person's pop for how was he was able to achieve 410 million DPS legitimately. And why this number is very misleading and how it could become so much lower with just a few clicks on POB. For the 3.15 balance manifesto, I do believe that there's a certain things that will probably go the way of the dinosaur and that GGG will nerf them. And it's kind of sad because some of these mechanics are actually pretty cool. So the number one thing is self-chill. So I don't really know how exactly they'll nerf it, but self-chill is probably... Something that's not intended to exist because of the medium cluster and how you're considered as your own enemy. But this also means that self-chill could still exist if it was done in another manner than by just using the cold conduction cluster. But they will probably nerf it in some degree. And then there's also the channeling clusters with how they work with Chainbreaker node. Because right now, the channeling clusters reduce the cost instead of just mana cost. So they could just change it to also to just reduce the mana cost instead of reducing the cost. And what this does is it means that you will no longer be able to have perma berserk pretty much or almost like near 100% uptime. Because right now, usually the way that they nerfed Chainbreaker was that when you use your skill, you would cost your mana to be lower and lower. And you can also use Chainbreaker with Fire Burst, but Fire Burst by itself is also very, very strong in the eyes of the people. Now, I personally don't really think Fire Burst is that like crazy of an endgame build, but having played the skill, it's very, very extremely strong in terms of having almost no gear and you don't even need a 6 link. And you can pretty much do a T16 map and bosses with very little investment. And a lot of times, a lot of things that get nerfed by GGG is just how popular something is and how much mention it is on reddit i don't really know if that's exactly how they nerf things but a lot of times it does seem that way because there's some stuff that's definitely like overpowered right but it's not popular enough to ever be on their radar but right now a lot of people also say that archmage agnostic archetype will be nerfed now the main part of the this build is that i believe that agnostic is a little broken agnostic sacrifices your 20 percent of your mana per second so it pretty much gives you like two to three k life regen and then you also have a bunch of mana regen and you also have mine over matter so you have an incredibly high hp pool and on top of that you also have pretty good damage overall so again this is the archetype of pretty much any skill that scales both your defenses and offense at the same time it's generally always going to become one of the best builds in the game we see it time and time again with the in stacker the strength stacker is also another one and then you also had hoa in stacking spectral throwback in the day and the aura stacker is also another build that's absolutely crazy because you scale your resists your defenses and your auras for damage at the same time and Archmage Agnostic is the exact same thing. You scale your life pool, you scale your regen, and you scale your damage ultimately with Archmage. Now lastly, I also believe that they'll probably do a generic, a general numerical nerf to all the overrepresented skills. So Bladefall, Blade Blast, you can probably expect to see another nerf. I think Fire Burst is probably going to go the same way. And then pretty much any skill that you see that's super popular on PoE Ninja will probably be nerfed and this also includes ascendancies like elementalist for instance now i hope that they do like light nerfs rather than just doing the triple ggg way of nerfing it which is nerfing the 
skill, nerfing the damage, nerfing the duration of the skill, and also nerfing it mechanically so that it becomes borderline unplayable. But those are the main things that I do think will get nerfed. I think we will be very surprised because I do think that in the balance manifesto, they want to shake the game up. I mean, how else could they write a 6,666 word manifesto full of nerfs? I think they probably want to explain some of why they changed Flash the way they did. So it'd be nice to hear the reasoning behind all their, all their decisions. But basically tomorrow they release it and we'll have a better idea of how they want of the direction they want to take the game and what builds will actually be good in 3.15. So a lot of people do ask how exactly do you get hundreds of millions of damage with my elemental hit or my skill is only like 20 to 30 million and it might be a little surprising but the big answer is more multipliers and that's pretty much what they're trying to nerf in the upcoming patch right they're trying to nerf support gems to have less more multiplier right so you see how like this guy is using a six link and then he has WED in it, Awaken Elemental Damage of Attack Support. This is a 59% more multi. Elemental Focus is a 54% more Elemental Damage. And then you have Barrage, which is pretty much a more multiplier because of additional projectiles. So that's pretty much 300% more damage divided by the 62% less damage. And a Hypothermia is a 40% more multiplier. And then Inspiration is a 35% more multiplier. So what you can expect to see is probably all of these top gems, mainly like Awaken Elemental Damage with attacks, so we'll probably see it go down by like 10% or so. So number one step in getting high damage is to choose supports that have the highest amount of more multiplier to it. And this comes at the cost of Elemental Focus, which makes it so you can't inflict Elemental Ailment. So here you click this thing, you can import this profile into POB, and you can see we have 455 million. Oh wait, I didn't import it, import it yet. So you go here, you copy and paste it, and you import it, and it goes, and you'll see it's at 455 million actually. Okay, so it's right. So first thing first, if you want to look at a pop correctly, so I actually wanted to go over how you actually make the pop realistic. You have to make sure that you get rid of these points because no one actually takes all these points. So you want to make sure that this number right here is the same, 123 out of 123. So now you can see we're still missing seven points. So where do these seven points actually come from? I'm actually not too sure. So you can click out these points here, 128, and he has more here. And I think that's about right. I'm actually not really sure how he has 127 points, but maybe I misclicked something, but I'm actually not sure. He just has infinitely more points, right? So if I go here, import it, did I import something wrong? Nope. This guy is cheating. He has more points than is actually possible. Because if you take out all of these things, then it makes no sense. I don't really know how he has so many points. I guess it's technically true that he might not have a cluster filled out all the way or something like that. But basically, the main thing to know is on POE Ninja, when you look at a person's profile, they automatically assume that you fill in the whole cluster. So if you have anything with five points, it will assume that you fill it out completely. So if you actually want to have the highest POE Ninja DPS, make sure to fill out to get 5 point clusters and never 4 points. So here, he most likely never took some of these nodes, right? So if he didn't take these travel nodes, so this guy is actually cheating a little bit. So in order to get it down, he probably did something like this, right? So this is a 124. Yeah, so something like this. But that's besides the point. So number one thing for builds to do a lot of damage is you need more and more multipliers. And now number one thing is crit multi. That's why crit builds will always blow dot builds out of the water. Dots cannot crit. The only way to scale dots like Exane Winnie is to get plus level on gems and to get physical damage over time multiplier or damage over time multiplier or chaos or something like that. But you can see this person has 835% crit. So normally someone does 1 damage, this person will be doing 8.35 damage and he has nearly 100% crit chance. Now you might be wondering how does this person have so much crit? Now the answer for this is because this person is using elemental hit, that means his jewel type is fire, cold, lightning. So that's why it's so important for a skill to have as many tags as possible and elemental hit just happens to be one of those skills. It has projectile, attack, melee, strike, fire, cold, lightning, AoE, and bow. 
So what this means is that it's fire, cold, and lightning tag. So you can see he has these jewels, which are multiplier of elemental, and elemental is any fire, cold, or lightning skills. It's multi with cold, multi with fire, generic multi, and he also has implicit multi and fire damage, and he has more jewels here that are just like that. Attack speed multi, so you can see the general trend is to get as much multi on your jewels as possible. Next step is to have some more damage multiplier on your Watcher's Eye, or to have a triple modded Watcher's Eye, so this guy has attack damage while affected by precision, and then he has multi while affected by anger, which is actually one of the highest DPS increases, increased mods on the Watcher's Eye. And then he also has pen while affected by anger. So he has combat focus. Now if you really want a lot of damage, you have to make sure each one of these jewels gives you pen. Because if you add it all up, 1%, 2%, 3% here, it just adds up slowly over time to be almost equivalent to like half of a pen gem, right? So this person has RMR on it, and then he has reduced reflected LE damage. He has pen, fire pen here, pen here. He doesn't have pen here, but... Generally, overall, try to also make sure that you min-max your implicits on your jewels because every one of these jewels can have 1% pen, right? Or in this case, synthesize implicits for more multi. And then next, we have to move on to flasks, right? Flasks are what's getting nerfed in the next league, and you can pretty easily see why they're getting nerfed. Flasks are absolutely crazy for crit builds. So he has 394 million damage right now, right? So you take off a flask, 279 million right now, right? Take off another flash, 220, another flash, 201, another flash, 173, another flash, 152 million. So the flash alone give him 2.5 times more damage or something. And that's just absolutely crazy. So if you want to have like insane amounts of DPS numbers, make sure to use the highest damage flash. All of these flashes are more damage multipliers. Bottle Fave is 10% increased damage to enemies on Consecrated Ground. It also has Crit Chance. And then Cinder Swallow is another 10%. Enemies ignited by you during Flash Effect take 10% increased damage. And those are all more multipliers. Skills Fire, 2 additional projectiles. This is another more multiplier because projectiles are pretty much just more damage. And then this is some Pen. And I think this person just uses this Flash because... I don't know. I think Wise Oak is probably just the highest for him. And then we move on to how do you even get even more and more multipliers. So this guy is a raider, right? So what being a raider means is that frenzy charges give him more damage, right? So this guy has increased attack damage, increased attack speed per frenzy charge. So he has plus one frenzy charge. And frenzy charge is just more damage overall, right? So if you go into the config here, do you use frenzy charges? No. His damage goes down to like half, right? So it's an insane difference to have frenzy charges. So this person has Frenzy Charges with plus one Frenzy and he has Multi on his Synthesized Ring. Same thing here, plus one Frenzy Multi, plus one Frenzy on the gloves, plus one Frenzy. He does not have plus one Frenzy on the boots. He has, and then that's about it. So he has as many Frenzy Charges as possible and he actually has 10 Frenzy Charges on this build. So... And also, we also have to move on to, you have to choose a skill that will allow you to get the highest damage possible. And Elemental Hit is just one of those skills. Elemental Hit has absolutely insane base damages on as a skill. So you can see here, this is 523 to 971 added fire damage. And this is just the base damage. And this is more than like any bow skill in the game. And then it also gets skill scaled with plus two bow gems. And then it also gets socketed skills deal 20% more attack damage. He has even more arrows, so you can see a common theme. Arrows scale the damage of the build insanely, and his quiver also has two additional arrows and 38% multi. So arrows, multi, more damage multipliers on your ascendancy with frenzy charges, more damage multipliers on your flask, multi on all of your jewels. And then lastly, another thing every single high dps build will have is cluster jewels cluster jewels add an insane amount of damage so that's why i believe that delirium league was probably one of the biggest like power spike leagues or power creep leagues as they may add so jewels like these things that says your critical strikes have a five percent chance to deal double damage is pretty much just five percent more damage so he has one here two here and these are just attack speed which is incredibly good so he has three here and then he has four here. So pretty much 
She has 20% more damage just because of these cluster jewels that give 5% chance to deal double damage. And this doesn't even account for the increased critical strike chance. And another thing about cluster jewels is that they also give you access to the jewel socket, which means that you can put in these jewels that have, how much multi is this? 36 plus 15, 51, 63%, 67% multi. That's just absolutely absurd. And then you also have to go around on a tree and take these nodes. So you can see that point blank is another more damage multiplier, 30%. And then we have to look into the skills, right? Because the skills are also pretty important. So skitter bots is more multi because it puts a shock on the mobs. We turn off skitter bots is actually a huge damage loss. And then your auras, of course, anger is a pretty big damage loss because he has a watcher's eye of anger, same with precision. And then sniper's mark is another one. Sniper's Mark is actually another more damage multiplier because it's 41% increased damage. So if you turn off Sniper's Mark, you actually lose an insane amount of damage. So you just even if you just turn off some of the stuff like right here, it goes down to 263 mil. Then you go and turn off some auras like Skitter Bots and then wait, Skitter Bots and Precision and Anger. And you can see the damage plummets. And that's before you even take into account the flasks. If you turn off the flasks and then you turn off the auras, his build is actually at a whopping 47 million, all the way down from 500 million. So he's able to do 10 times more damage from just auras, like a couple auras, three auras, some flasks, and the curses with the marks, right? So it really shows you that all these more damage multipliers add up, and the more more damage multipliers you have on top of another, the more damage you're going to do. And that's how people reach like 400 million, 500 million tooltip. Uh, this person's profile is probably a little more realistic than the other ones you see because he's not stacking like 11 watcher's eyes or something. So if you look at this person's profile, which is completely unrealistic, 1.5 billion. And this is because this guy literally has every single cluster jewel on the tree because it fills it all out. And then he also has like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 watcher's eye. But this person's profile over here is a much more accurate representation of what's it called of an accurate character and how you're actually able to scale the damage up to 410 million. And props to this guy because this is like see, some insane gear. Like these are both mirrored, right? And he has an insane Stygian. But I also want to talk about why like Builds of all rare items will never be more expensive than an aura stacker because you have no corrupted items. So every single piece of gear can be mirrored, right? So one mirror, two mirror, three mirror, four mirror, five, six, seven, eight. Now the most expensive thing is this quiver, which is probably worth more than all this gear put together, right? This is probably a five, six mirror quiver. Not really sure how many mirrors this is, but this item is actually crazy. And I guess this thing is pretty nuts too, so... If you have an all rare item build, everyone can just mirror your pieces, but an ore stacker has like items like the one passive point voices and stuff that's just insanely expensive because of corruptions. Like stack of walls plus two plus two alone is probably like three to four mirrors on a good day. But hopefully me showing you this guy's build and props to this guy because he put together an extremely sick character and it was his only character of the league. But Hopefully this shows you that you can scale your damage really, really high in this game. So even if GGG does all these nerfs, we will still have like 200 mil DPS. And who knows, maybe there's some more new tech that people can find. Maybe some more quintuple multi jewels or something like that. But this also shows you something pretty scary, right? The more and more multipliers you have, the more your damage will drop because of GGG's nerfs. So you can expect builds like this that absolutely have the best multi possible on the gem supports to lose probably like 50% of their damage. Seeing this build actually makes me want to play Ellie Hit, but I hope this demonstration really illustrates that Ellie Hit is a pretty good gem. It's not the best league starter, but for endgame, I don't think anything beats it on PoE Ninja. I guess Glacial Hammer does, but that's kind of a meme, right? Tomorrow will be the Balanced Manifesto, and then the day after that will be the patch notes. So at that point, we'll know a little bit more about what will be the best league starter. I'm actually still very scared for Scion because Scion really does not have that many good league starters. If you look at all of the Scion builds, it's Cock, Ice Nova or something. And it's Spark, it's another Cock, Ice Spear, it's another more cycle cast on crit. Exsanguinate is fine. Ball Lightning is the Archmage build. Penance Brand is the build for ore stackers so you can see choices are very limited cremation is another mana build 
So it will be very hard to level a spark if the build manifesto nerfs everything. But thanks for watching everyone. And if you like the content, be sure to like and subscribe. I will be on tomorrow to discuss the balance manifestos and to read the 6,600 word essay. But thanks for watching everyone. And I hope you find more mirrors and exalts than I do. And see you next time.